Hey everybody, this is RC Mechanic, and I have something new on the bench. Uh, this is the SCX-102 Raw Builders Kit, and um, the reason why I bought this was because I, well, I needed some parts for my uh, skeleton chassis, and uh, when I bought the the parts for that, uh, we'll, we'll say almost two years ago now. I think it's almost two years. Um, the uh, I went a little bit too cheap on the axles and all that, and uh, when it came to uh, you know mounting the pan hard bar to that, um, the plastic was so soft that it uh, it broke. So uh, I scrapped that idea, and uh, I've been searching for um, something to uh, replace that with, and I figure, well, hey, why not just go with the um, SCX-10 Rob Builders kit because it has everything I need in it. It has the, uh, you know, at least I can use the parts of the transmission, I think, in uh, the uh, skeleton chassis, and uh, I know I can use the axles for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's see what's in here. Alright, so uh, even though this thing is upside down, Let's flip it upside up. Okay, so uh, it comes with uh, shocks, it comes with uh, the gears, and it comes with a universal joint um, axles for the front driver drive shaft. Um, suspension links, all that stuff, uh, all metal transmission gears, which I'm going to be using because uh, my plan, and it is just a plan. Is that uh, this right here? I think there's something up with it because when I'm under a bind, it seems to slip. So I don't know if it's because I, it almost feels like I have the gear mesh wrong right here. But uh, if that's not the case, I'm going to take this apart too. And um, if I can use the gears right here. <clears throat> in this transmission um, I will uh, the truck uh, the SCX-10 clone is uh, very much like the uh, TFL racing uh, like Bronco if any of you have ever seen it you're going to see it probably pretty soon it's on order and it's on the way um, it is a pretty cool truck I have been wanting it for a really long time and um, I'm lucky enough to, you know, because of the government, I can uh, go on a spending spree and buy it. All right, so uh, let's take this thing out of the box and uh, see what we have. All right, so <clears throat> just like any other kit, uh, we have uh, different bags for different things. I'm going to have to put these axles together, right? So, and then we have uh, like the battery box and it has bumpers. We have, I guess we call the transmission parts and all that right here. And then, um, then we have like the frame rails and the instruction book. And the not, at least look like a... Uh, some sort of like a cones for like a trail marker and all that. So uh, it's going to be a good time, I think. Um, I think there are some things I'd be able to use out of this kit for some other projects as well. I had never intended to uh, um, build this to build a uh, to build a rig, but uh, there are some things I, I'm sure I can use for that. So. Uh, Let's dig into the uh, axles because I need them most and uh, we can move on. Alright, so just for fun, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through the instruction on uh, assembling these axles. Um, these shouldn't take too long. They're uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, I have not ever owned a SGX-10 II before, so that's the only difference. Alright? So, let's do the front first. 
the front. Zoom you in. The ring and pinion are all basically the same. So let's uh, slice that open real quick. So look at that. And I was looking for them shoulder bolts and it looks like I found them. Alright, so <clears throat> if nobody uh, knows what a shoulder bolt is, they are, let me put this on the end of here, one of these. Alright, so there's a smooth area towards the head of it and then it's threaded at the end. That smooth uh, part would have uh, taken the place of what used to be like uh, what we call a hat bushing or something like that and the hat bushing would go down in here and then a uh, regular screw would go through that all right so to eliminate that they just went with one part to do that all right so <clears throat> let's go ahead and put the ring and pinion in I'm gonna find my grease and um, see you in a sec all right so I got the bearings out right here and uh, Found my grease right here, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, throw these in. So, should I follow the instructions? Probably, huh? All right. So, it's like the bigger bearing goes right there, like that. There's a smaller bearing that goes right here. Like that. We'll do that on both of them. Alright, so we've got the bearings in for the pinion right now. I'm going to put the pinion gear in. Doing these both at the same time. All right, so we got that in. Whoops. <laughs> All right, just like that. The front one is going to take a little longer because we have uh, steering knuckles and all that going on right here alright so then we got our ring right here for the front and rear alright so let's go ahead and put these on here and here Now the way this uh, case is made, there's only one way this can go on. So it's really difficult to get it reversed. So you you know, so you won't have the truck driving itself apart. So it just sits in there like that. All right. Same thing on the other. I gotta say I'm, I'm really impressed with the machining on this it's like everything fits so slap that in there like that all right so now we got those in we'll take our grease lately I've been using this uh, white lithium grease I'm not uh, big on marine grease because it uh, creates way too much friction in my opinion alright so now that's uh, greased up we'll go ahead and put the cover on you can see some of it oozed out so I got a little bit too much in there Same thing on this one.
Actually, it looks like I did not even need to pull the instructions out because it's pretty much a simpleton kind of thing, I call it. All right, so got those in. We're going to put the screws in here. Alright, so uh, for the rear axle, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just put the axles in. And uh, there's a, uh, another bearing. It goes on the area outside. And that goes in there. Like that. And the uh, only thing holding these in are these uh, screws right here. Right, so the edge of the screw head holds the bearing in place. So go ahead and do this side. Uh, if I can find a hole. All right, so um, if you look at this, uh, you can see that the edge of the, the screw head just covers the outer race of the bearing right there, and that's what holds your axle in. It's not a big thing because this is not supposed to be a fast truck, although I've seen people build these and uh, make them one. But as long as the bearing is good, you should not have an issue with the axle coming out. I was kind of um, expecting uh, to see something like uh, because the end of this axle looks an awful lot like a Losi or Vitera um, that there would be a sleeve that, that that would have to slide into there with a bearing but there isn't it's just the edge of these screws right here this one and this one that are um, holding this bearing in place so and that keeps the axle from falling out if you have a problem with the axle falling out because you lost one of these screws eh, or the bearing failed one of the two. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this other one in and then um, we'll wrap this up. Alright, so uh, everything's all together and uh, you know the front uh, front differential, uh, we have the knuckles on right here and uh, the rear, like I said before, um, I was kind of expecting some sort of a cap or sleeve to go into there uh, with this bearing, but um, in this case it is uh, the shoulder of the screw itself that's holding it in. Um, a very similar design to uh, the Losi Rockray and uh, Twin Hammers. Um, really glad to see that uh, Horizon Hobby has incorporated some of that um, into the axial line and um, I've never owned uh, one of these uh, builders kits before, even though it may seem like I did. <laughs> I do, and uh, because I, you know, I did have the instruction book open, but um, never did really look at it. Um, <clears throat> pretty straightforward, um, very simple. Um, simple is good, um, as far as I know. Uh, very strong, and. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll see how it fits into the uh, um, skeleton chassis, and um, go from there. So let me go dig that out real quick and um, take a look at it. You can see 
Uh, reason why I'm changing over to these instead of using what I bought. All right, so here's uh, here's the skeleton chassis. Uh, as you can see, uh, I bought these uh, SCX10 type uh, axles for it. Uh, but when I went to go and uh, screw down the panhard bar right here, um, it broke. Actually broke to a point where um, yeah you can't use it, but hopefully uh, you know it won't be uh, all forgotten. It be uh, parts I can use uh, on other machines. So um, yeah, and on the back right here you see all the have these uh, uh, covers right here that hold the re you know hold the bearing in place. Um, Hopefully, um, with the actual uh, SCX standing axles, um, you know, that'll hold up a little better. So, um, I'm hoping that uh, I can still use, like, the gears and all that in here. And um, this one does have a cantilever suspension. So, you know, this will, like, so completely change everything um, it takes up like no room I love it I mean I wish I had uh, I wish I had these in uh, many of my trucks so you know but this is kind of like a pet project of mine um, <clears throat> this uh, was originally bought to uh, have the um, post-apocalyptic Mustang body on it which I guess I can't say anymore. Let me go grab that. So here's the Mustang body that was uh, it was originally bought in for. Um, it is uh, you know it would fit pretty dang close, right? So I'm still on a mission to find a uh, chassis that will fit that. Uh, I know I'm going to have to have cut away at the wheel wells right here and here here and here um, because uh, pretty much everything I own is like a mud truck or a trail truck so I'll have to cut away at that um, but uh, I have switched from this one to another one let me grab that so it is said that this uh, here uh, Jeep was actually uh, the JK uh, chassis was built to uh, handle this Jeep and um, it fits really good um, there's gonna have to be uh, you know for my personal taste there's gonna have to be some uh, modifications to it but you know other than that looks good so, uh, go ahead and find a different uh, chassis for the uh, for the Mustang right here, and uh, you know we'll move on from there. So, I can get this thing going with this uh, Raw Builders kit, and um, there will most likely be some other parts out of that kit that I will use on the Dodge. So, it's all it's all not lost. Um, it was like $199 for that kit and uh, I was considering actually just getting the uh, um, what do you call it the kit to change the uh, SCX-10 um, 3 to a solid axle non-portal but there was like a $40 difference so <clears throat> I figured you know for that I could probably use some of the other parts off of the builder's kit. So that's why I bought that. Come on, get off. Alright. So, hey guys. Um, I know uh, some of this video was uh, pretty much like for first timers. And uh, really, to tell you the truth, I have a lot of uh, first, first timers uh, watching this show. So, um, 
If it seemed kind of boring to you, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm also catering to those who do not know anything about this at all. So, uh, this RC mechanic uh, saying, hey, may I go out and check out my other uh, 150 plus videos and uh, check me out on uh, Instagram. I'm on Instagram as rc.mechanic. Um, and I hope to see you there. Thank you.